greater than negative one? Yeah, it can't be greater than three because nine minus three squared is zero, which is okay. But if it's bigger than three, that's not gonna work. So uh, X has to be less than or equal to three. And negative three would work, but <coughs> negative four wouldn't work. Because nine minus negative four squared would be a negative. So X would have to be between negative three and three. That is a bit of a... Okay, how about the range? What does range mean? What's range mean? Y values. It's how high it, up and down it goes. Um, well, we don't have a lot of possibilities here, so let's plug in, like, if I plug in negative 3 right there, what do I get? Zero. So, negative 3 is 0. If I plug in positive 3, what do I get? Zero. 9 minus 3 squared is 0. Squared is 0 is 0. So, 3, 0 is a point. Uh, if I plug in Zero. Let's look in the middle. If I plug in zero right there, what do I get? Nine minus zero is nine. Square root of nine is three. So what it is is kind of a semicircle, basically. So what is the range? Like what, what y values are included here? Zero to three going up and down. So, 0 to 3. Okay, and the last, the third question is, what are the zeros of the function? We kind of already talked about this. What x values make the function equal to 0? Three and negative three, because we kind of did that when we talked about what x values would work up here. So three is the biggest it can get because it makes it zero, which is okay. And negative three is the smallest it can get. But anyway, those are the zeros of function. Okay. Okay. Did we do... Did we do number two? I can't remember. I'll go to the graph paper here. Let's see. Okay, so called a piecewise function. Are you guys sure we haven't done this? I'm not convinced. Y, uh, g of x equals x plus 1. This is the first part of it. Uh, if x is less than negative 1. Oh. So,
So x is less than negative 1. Here's x equals negative 1 right here. That's where it's going. So all over here. So we're only going to graph it to the left of negative 1. So how would I graph this normally? Start up 1, and then I go up 1 over 1. But I'm not supposed to graph it right here. So normally I would start right there, and then I'd go up and over and up and over. Or you go down this way. Um, I'm going to put an open circle right there. I'm going to go down and back instead of open over. I'm going to put an open circle right there because 1 is not included. It's less than negative 1 is not included. So it's going to look just like that. Just like the left part of 1. So we're cutting the line in here. Uh, probably not. But it is not my configuration now, so I'm going to do it. Okay. So then it says the function is going to be 1 minus x squared for x values greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay, how do I figure out what 1 minus x squared is going to look like? If it's an x squared, what's it going to look like? Parabola. Parabola. What's the negative going to do to it? Upside down. Upside down. What's the 1 going to do to it? Up 1. Up 1. Okay, if you weren't sure though, you can just start plugging in x values. Like, the lowest one is negative 1. 1 minus negative 1 squared yeah. is 0. So there's a point at negative 1, 0. So I guess where we made this open circle, it's going to be a closed circle in the next graph part. If I plug in 0, it's basically an upside down parabola that's up 1. So it's if I plug in 0, 1 minus 0 squared is 1 like that. If I plug in 1, I get 0. If I plug in 2, 1 minus 2 squared is negative 3. 2, negative 3. Oh, whoa, whoa. Get Sometimes I accidentally sound like my dad. <laughs> when I said, get out of there, that's what my dad would say. Hey, why would it only be partial? Partial? Okay, so we're just graphing this from x values negative 1 and oh. greater. So they're like combining two things together. Yeah. Like uh, Frankenstein. When you made from a bunch of different body parts. <laughs> Maybe they weren't as funny as you thought they were. Oh, no, they were. They were probably funny because she did almost the same thing to ours. I took a selfie with a Frankenstein filter on Snapchat with like Isaac laying on the ground and I said, just kill the woman. <laughs> she got a bunch of points for that. that wow. What class is this? That was English. English. Frankenstein taking a selfie. Like yeah, that is funny. It's because she said social media wasn't around back then. Or something. Neither were phones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they didn't have like, <laughs> phones. That's, that's the joke. <laughs> that's funny. You're right. Ooh. 
boom, boom, boom. Put that thing back in where it came from. It's from monsters. Are you okay? My brain's all over the place, yeah. Okay, so on. This one. Um, no, nah, I was just thinking of something else. Okay, what's f plus g of x? How do we do that? Just add these two together. Um, you can only add like terms, right? So only the 2x plus x. Here's, here's what it would look like. x squared plus 2x. You don't really need parentheses on this, but I'll go ahead and write it. So only these are like terms. So it's just going to equal x squared plus 3x plus 2. Not every question in this chapter is hard. And then b is f minus g of x. The parentheses would be a little bit more helpful on this one. Because you have to subtract all of g of x, not just part of it. So it would look like that. But again, you can only add or subtract like terms. So 2x minus x is 1x. But also we have to subtract, oh boy, we have to subtract the two. So it'll look like that. Hmm. F times g of x, what would multiplying look like on this problem? Yeah, it'd be a foil because there's just two terms x squared plus 2x times x plus 2. So, what's the first going to be? What's the outside going to be? What's the inside going to be? What's the last going to be? Four. Can I do anything else? I'd like terms 2x squared plus 2x squared is 4x squared. synthetic division. I'm sure we would fail at the long division, but uh, do you guys remember how synthetic division works? So we're dividing <laughs> x squared plus 2x divided by x plus 2. You guys remember how synthetic division works? Oh, uh, you could do like the negative 2. What are the coefficients for, it's called a dividend. 1, 0, and 2. 1, well, close. There you go. Yeah, there's no constant. There's a 1, a 2, and then there's no number out here, so it's a 0. And then what do we put in the box, though? Two. Nobody wants to commit, no? Negative. Negative 2. Yeah, you have to do the opposite. Okay, remember how this goes? Add down. Multiply up, add down, multiply up, add down. Okay, what's this stuff mean? This is the remainder. Yeah, this is the constant. This is the x term. And if there's another one, it'd be x squared, x cubed. So it's just x. Kind of a weird one. I guess I didn't even think of it, but we could have factored to divide. Because if you take an x out of the top, you're left with x plus 2. 
and those would cancel out. So that would work also. Not everything is factorable though. One on the test probably will be. Okay, okay, moving on. How are we doing? Yikes. No. Okay, what's f of g of x mean? Or f, yeah. What's that mean? G goes We're still using the stuff on number three, by the way. Yeah, we're going to put the g function inside the x function. I'm going to write them down again. x squared plus 2 of it. Okay, so we're going to pick up the g function and put them into the f function, put it into the x, f function where x used to be. So instead of x squared plus 2x, it's going to be x plus 2 squared plus 2 times x. So I replace the x with x plus 2. We could simplify that if we foiled it. I kind of want to skip this a little bit for time's sake, but oh, you know, um, that, that would be a simpler version of that. And if you put the first one on the test, I'd probably, probably still give credit for that. Okay, and then B is the same thing but backwards. So it's g of f of x. So what does that mean? By the way, this can also be written like this, g of f of x. But it means you're going to put the f function into the g function, the other way around. So this stuff, the f function, is going to go right there. This one's easier. So it's just x squared plus 2x plus 2. We did do number six. All right. Uh, okay, six A. I'm supposed to grab these. Oh gosh, it's a pain. It's almost a stair step thing, but it the last step is a taller. Hmm. hmm. Uh, it would probably help if I graph the original. This is where we got out the colors, but mm -hmm. we'll just make a different graph for G. So it starts at negative 3, 2, and goes down, over, down, over, way down. So what is the 2 times f of x on a? What's the 2 times that going to do? 2 times the function. It's tall. Yeah, it makes it twice as tall. So if the function value is at 2 right here, like the y value is at 2, when you times 2, it's going to be up at 4. So we got a point negative 3, 4. Right here, where the function value is at 1, the y value is at 1, when you times it by 2, those will be up at 2. Everything's going to be stretched vertically. When you multiply 0 by 2, it's still 0, so these are still going to be in the middle. When you multiply negative 2 times 2, it'll be down at negative 4. So it's just taller steps.
And B, what does the absolute value of the function do? It just stays above the... Right, oh yeah. Well, yes. Uh, unless it stays above the y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis. If it was negative, it's going to become positive. Uh, unless they put like a minus 2 out here or something, that would shift everything down to. But they're not going to be that mean to us. Okay, so everything that was negative is going to have to become positive. That means this part right here is just going to bounce, yeah, it's going to go up here in the positive. So everything that was positive stays positive, right? So this stuff, and zero stays zero, so this stuff stays zero. But instead of going down to, on the next step, it's going to go up to... the negative in front of the f of x do? Too big. What If you make everything negative, what's that do to the function? Yeah, all the y values switch, so it's a vertical flip. Vertical flip. If you put the negative on the x, and on the, all the x values switch, so that means it's a horizontal flip, but if you make the whole function negative, like the y value is going to so it'll be this upside down. So instead of negative three, two, it'll be negative three, negative two. And the stair steps will go up. Splash them, Leo. I was a splash them. Should have wore your plastic uh, earring gear. Uh, D, what's a plus two on the X going to do to it? Nope. When it's directly on the X, it does the opposite, moves it left two. So instead of negative three, two, if it was outside of the function, it would up to, but when it's directly on the x, it affects the x direction, so everything is going to move left to. So where it was negative 3, 2, it's going to be negative 5, 2. When it's on the x, it kind of does the opposite of, so stepping down, stepping over. You guys remember periodic functions? What is the period? We don't have to graph this one. What is the period of the function on number seven? No. You guys remember what period was? Uh, when, uh, I guess it has been a couple weeks. It's yeah, it starts before it starts. yeah. How far does it go in the x direction before it starts to repeat itself? So you could count like how far is it from hilltop to hilltop or you know, valley to valley or whatever. Uh, the left hilltop is at negative 2. The right hilltop is at x equals 2. So how far is it from negative 2 to 2? Four. 4. That's the period. OK. 
Okay, the amplitude, which is the B question. Uh, no, that's a C question. They tricked me. What's the maximum minimum values of G? So that means how high and low does the function go? What's, no, what's the highest G value? Four. Four. That's how high it goes. And what's the lowest? One. The highest G value, which is like the highest Y value, means it goes up to four and down to one. <coughs> so the reason they did that first is because the amplitude is like how much the graph is going up and down from the middle. Or you can do the height of the graph divided by two. So if it's going up to four and down to one, how high is that graph? Three. Well, the amplitude is, yeah, 1.5, but the height of the graph is it's going from there to there. That's like three tall, right? From four to one. So the amplitude is that divided by two. Yeah, it is 1.5. We're skipping eight, by the way. think what did I put? Ten? Mm -hmm. yeah. We might not get to ten. Okay, well, let's do nine. Which of the two functions has an inverse? Uh okay, we this was pretty recent. This was this week, yeah. the inverse stuff. Uh, how can we tell on a graph whether it has an inverse? Do you guys remember? Yeah, horizontal line test. Like, this has an inverse. This passes. But this does not have an inverse. Fail. Uh, what's, the, what's the G of X, X 3 plus X, going to look like? Line. It's a line, right? Like, the slope is 1, so it, it'll just look something like that. Does that have an inverse? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing... Uh, okay. Um, I forgot what's in threes. Well, it doesn't have an inverse, okay. Um, we can plug stuff in and see what's happening. It's kind of like number one. Except for it be between, uh, you couldn't use imaginary numbers. That doesn't make sense. If you plug in zero, you get the square root of three. Plug in negative one. Is this going to be the No, number three had a minus, or number one had a minus right there. So it, it will look different, but I don't think they're going to ask us to figure it out. So I don't think we need to graph it. So, okay, anyway, the line is going to have an inverse. The lines almost always have an inverse. Uh, but it says find a rule for the inverse. You guys remember how we did that? Mm -hmm. Switch the x and the y. Switch the x and the y. So instead of y equals 3 plus x, it's x equals 3 plus y. So they made this one easy. And then you solve for y. So get, that means get y by itself on one side. Get rid of the plus 3 by subtracting 3. So y equals x minus 3. And if I put it back into function notation, g inverse is equal to x minus 3. For the B1, um, it doesn't have an inverse. The book always said, remember, like it doesn't. It's not one to one.
I guess if you said it fails the horizontal line test, that'd be okay. Ten. I'm not sure I put this one on the test. It's a bit of a mess. Maybe instead I'll just put one of those word problems on there. In the worksheet. Uh, man, I guess we're about out of time.